research that I that I loved. It was so much fun to write. You know, and it's just pure wish fulfillment for a writer to. Did you have Dukovny in mind? No, I mean, no, not at all. When I write things, I don't really see an actor. It's just you know the voice in my head. And, you know, and uh, you, you may plug in like usually I plug in people from the past. Like I said, like oh, this is like a Jack Nicholson type of guy or a Warren Beatty. But even those are such vague. You know, yeah. references, they don't, it's not like I'm really thinking that as I'm writing the script. You just kind of step back and go like, oh, I'm just, tr- you're trying to capture a tone. You know, and I was trying to capture a tone of, of irreverent anti-authority movies that, you know, I had seen when I was a kid in the 70s and I, I just didn't see them anymore. And I wanted to try and capture some of that. Also, you know, when I was a kid, there was a tradition of the sex farce. You know, there were Blake Edwards movies and I hadn't seen that in a long time. You know, and I was trying to recapture a time when sex in movies or television was more matter of fact, you know, because now we live in a very puritanical age when it comes to sex <coughs> on the screen. Hmm. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, would it be puritanical in a religious, social, cultural, or political? I just, I just think when you deal with people having sex on television it's just there's a I don't know there's a morality that comes into play and it, you know Californication got a bad rap at times as being the show it's just a show about sex and you know it's porn which I always thought was funny because if you really want to watch porn the, there's a lot out there for you yeah. you know it's a click away like if you're watching Californication for porn purposes like I think you're a little confused So to me, it was like the sex was the, it was the comedic sex piece of the yeah. thing, you know, and it was always absurd and, and funny. It wasn't really for titillation. Well, I, I think it was the thinking men's porn, you know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, but it's like when I was a kid, you know, there were a couple of TV shows you could count on where you could see gratuitous nudity and, the, nudity and those were always appreciated. But again, like for people growing up now... Or even 10 years ago, mm -hmm. there's so many better ways. To <laughs> I know, I know. But you know, like let's say for example, going back to the episode one, yeah, season one, yeah, that was jam packed. Yes, indeed, indeed. Do you was that? Did, were you like setting the audience up for the arc of the whole story? Well, it, I wish I could say that, but no, because the way Californication was written, it was written at a time when. I had come off of my first TV job, which was a show called Dawson's Creek. Mm -hmm. And all anybody really seemed to want from me after that was, was to write another teen drama. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't what I was in. I wasn't interested in that at the time. I just, I wanted to write something to change people's perception. Because it's funny how that works. When I got onto Dawson's Creek, it was through a screenplay I'd written, which was really raunchy and down and dirty. And Hollywood loves to take that kind of writing voice and put it to work at something more anemic, hoping that you'll breathe some life into that. So, but quickly everyone forgets where you came from. So I was just trying to write something that changed people's perceptions. So Californication was written uh, just as a spec script with no thought of the future. It was just a character. And I wrote it as a screenplay initially. Uh, and I didn't outline it, so every day, you know, I woke up in the morning and go, I'm going to start a screenplay. And I, I, what's the first scene? Okay, a guy who's a writer walks into a church and lays out his problems. Um, maybe he gets a blowjob from a nun, but it's all a dream. And so every day, I just kind of followed that, that journey. The problem is when you don't outline a screenplay, somewhere inevitably you'll take a wrong turn. So in this case, somewhere after page 60 of this script, I took a wrong turn, and it just didn't work as a movie. And I was just so disappointed in myself, and I, I threw it in a drawer, and then and my wife read it, and she said, she said, you're right, it's a terrible movie, but the first 60 pages, it's the best stuff you've ever written. And I was like, okay, 60 pages. That sounds like a TV show. <laughs> so I just chopped it off in page 60, and it started making the rounds as, a, as a, just a spec script, writing sample and people started to really respond to the character and Showtime loved it and they said well you know you don't want it to be an hour show this is because you, you don't want to have to fill this every week so let's chop it down 
to a half hour, and and away we went. So there was never any plan of like, I, I didn't have a plan for the TV show until someone said, you're making a TV show. Would you rather be a TV writer or screenwriter? The goal was always screenwriter. And I didn't really even watch much TV. I came to LA, 95, and the goal was just about writing screenplays. And you know, I ended up writing and selling a screenplay, and that, that got me started. But I quickly realized the movie world... It's tough. I mean, it's tough to get work. You're constantly auditioning for new jobs. Most of the time, the things you write don't get made. So I ended up getting a lot of attention from the TV world. You know, they like my dialogue. And, and I realized they, oh, they'll pay me right now, and the things I write will get made? This sounds fantastic. So I ended up on Dawson's Creek, and that was great because it was like a four-year college for learning how to write TV, and I ended up running it in the last couple of years. So um, so I ended up just falling into television, but I love it because I love the pace of it. You know, I love that um, you're, you're constant. Like if you could write an episode, maybe it doesn't work, but there's another one coming around the corner. You know, so there's just so much writing you get to do and so much learning. Yeah, I, I could see that, for example, if you write a screenplay, you really invest a lot of em em uh, emotional time, mm -hmm. you know, with the character, especially some, you know, somebody like Hank Moody. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's done after what a ninety, a hundred pages, and then sure. it's over. Yeah. Whereas writing a, uh, a TV series, you can always revisit the character. Yeah. You know, and take him in different directions. You sure. Know, and different adventures and different, you know. Situation. Yeah, that's what's, what was fun about Californication because every year was a little bit like starting over. I got to, since it was an untraditional show, I got to put him into a different world every year and surround him with different guest characters, you know, whether it was the rock and roll world or, you know, one year he got involved in hip hop stuff and one year he was teaching. So it was always kind of a, you got to repilot the whole thing and just watch how he interacted with a new group of people. That was great about watching the show. Yeah. Um, that we just didn't know what was coming up in the next season. Yeah. You know, and, and when you, the one about teaching, that was yeah, that tremendous was because that put him in the, uh, <laughs> all the young girls. You right, know? right. It was like, exactly. okay. And then the one about the music world. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of music even before that season. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of music involved in the show. Well, yeah, I think with Hank, it was my way of writing about a rock star without literally writing about a rock star because he behaved that way. He had a very rock and roll attitude and I've discovered through the years writing about the music business, writing about bands, writing about musicians, it's tough. I mean, on the one hand, it's tough to do well. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, networks and studios, they're not always, you know, they're not eager to do it. I think because they know that it's it's execution contingent. So with Hank, I was like, okay, I can I can infuse this rock and roll spirit to the show without actually, you know, making him a guy in a band. So it was always in it was always in there. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and your choice of of the music mm -hmm. that Hank will listen to was really yeah. eclectic. Yeah. Especially the Warren Zevon, which I loved. Yeah. How that played off. I mean, it was like a nice layer to it. Yeah, Warren Zevon. That came from David Duchovny because when we were started making the show, I think he was reading. He was reading a biography of his, and he he said, "You should check this out because he seems like seems a lot like Hank." It almost seems like his music would be the, you know, would would just fit in really well with the tone of the show. And, uh, you know, if Warren Zevon, like, I knew, you know, I knew Werewolves of London, but I didn't really know a ton about him personally or the deeper cuts. So I just took a deep dive and I it, it just was the serendipitous thing where I was like, wow, he is sort of the, the musical patron saint of the show. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the the choice of music was just fantastic. Yeah. And, and you actually, you cast some real live musicians. That's right. You know? Whenever I could. Yeah. Much to the chagrin of, of David Duchovny. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you know, musicians aren't always the best actors. So sometimes I would, you know, the the time I'm thinking of was, it was a dream come true for me because I cast Lemmy. 
yeah. in a part in the yeah. second season of the show, yeah. and we yeah. shot at the Rainbow. Yeah. And, you know, David's a great guy, and he loves music, but, you know, Lemmy, Motorhead, that's not exactly his world. So... So he's doing a scene with Lemmy, and he just he was like, "Who is this guy? I don't really understand." <laughs> um, he doesn't seem to know his lines, <laughs> and that was my fault because I gave Lemmy way too much dialogue, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Lemmy was great too because he had no, he was a super nice guy, but he had no interest in the the etiquette of the set. He he told the director of the episode that had to he had to be out at like two o'clock because <laughs> he was recording in the studio. And if he wasn't let out on time, that he was going to use a switchblade to cut his, his <laughs> cheeks wide open. You know, joking, of course, but I think the director <laughs> didn't really understand, and he got a little scared. But uh, with Lemmy, ultimately that episode was, was so long, and the scene didn't turn out great, so I had to cut it. Oh, no. But it, it's, it's there partially in the Lemmy documentary. You see, uh-huh. <laughs> you see him on the set of Californication oh, God. filming, so that yeah. so at least it lives in yeah. some fashion. Yeah. You had Zach Wilde. Yeah, we had Zach. Zach was another great story because yeah. I cast Zach um, in the same season, and let's say we were going to shoot his scene on a Monday. Yeah. On Friday, his manager calls and said, "Zach's going to rehab," <laughs> so we had no Zach. <laughs> So I had to, so I think I, I put some biker type in a jail cell, but then a couple of years later I used Zach and it was the clean and sober Zach, yeah, yeah. and that was he he was a different person because the first time I met Zach he was it was two in the afternoon yeah he was completely wasted yeah. he was taking his dick out wrapping around his wrist I mean it was it was an incredible story. <laughs> And uh, Steve Jones, that's yeah. another one. Yeah, Jonesy was was fantastic. Yeah. He, we were looking for a, a, like a tour manager character, yeah. British, and my casting director said, well, "Who's the prototype?" And I said, "Well, it's like Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols." And she's like, "Okay," um, and I said, "Why don't we just see if he's interested?" Because I, I looked him up, and he had done an episode of Portlandia, and I was like, "He's got to have some." some acting experience or ability and he's been on the radio so we just called him and he uh he was happy to do it and he was fantastic i mean he's he's hilarious i mean he's really good i think he really enjoyed it you know because i think the music guys i mean it's such a break from their what they normally experience that they 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 you know they just they dig that world so and then you had which was my favorite uh musical guest star sebastian Oh, Sebastian. Mainly yeah. because he played a dead guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Sebastian was super happy with the experience because he he came in and, again, my mistake, I had him do a British accent <laughs> and didn't work out well, so I had to revoice him. And when he, he saw the episode, you know, I ran into him at the rap party and he was like, you're the guy who did, why didn't you tell me you had to change my voice? And <laughs> He wasn't super happy, but uh, most of the scenes he was laying in a cask. Yeah, yeah, but he was. <laughs> yeah, and you he know was how great. he is. He's so animated. He's super animated. Yeah, I think he drove the company crazy too because he was. <laughs> hey, dude. Yeah, he was. He's like a puppy that you need to deal I with. Know. You know, I love, um, I love him. Yeah, I love him. no, I love he's fantastic. Yeah, he's great. He is great. He's great. A great so. Another great character that you created for television yeah. was Lucifer. Yeah, Lucifer. Lucifer was a lot of fun until it wasn't anymore. But Lucifer started, they gave me the graphic novel. And the graphic novel is brilliant, but it's super weird. And it's dealing with all these realms outside of humanity. And it's fantastical. But the core premise of the, the devil quits hell... He moves to Los Angeles and he opens up a bar. I loved, and I was like, I could write that all day long. Yeah. So we sold it to Fox, and you know, I started writing it. And there was a there was a cop character in the script I was writing, but she was in the background. But what happens in TV is that if you put a cop into a show, inevitably, the network will want it to be about solving crime. <laughs> That's what I learned. And so, you know, from where I started with Lucifer, about being a very grounded, somewhat comedic take on the devil in L.A., became about the devil 
helping the LAPD.